This episode of Fuel for the Soul is powered by ASICS. Head over to ASICS.com and sign up for a one ASICS account. It's completely free, and when you sign up, you will receive 10% off your first purchase. You'll also gain access to exclusive colorways on ASICS.com, free standard shipping, special birthday month discounts, and more. Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Featherstone Nutrition. AKA Runway Feathers. <laughs> Wait, somebody made me a feathers bracelet. Did you see this? Oh, no. And send it to me. So it's 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 not made of feathers. If you're not watching the podcast, <laughs> it's made of other stuff. I think it just says feathers. It says feathers. Yeah. It doesn't even say it, it reads feathers. Yeah, sure. Yes, correct. Yeah. So just a fan gave that to you? Mm-hmm. I thought you said not to ramble at the beginning. <laughs> Sorry, that was my fault. Yeah, this one, this one falls on, it's that on me over there. Yeah, all right. It's anyway, me. thanks for listening. Peas and carrots, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick one, just like that. That's the end. Meg did try to find peas and carrots at Trader Joe's, the gummies that everybody's been sending us. I did. Yeah. I I lost my patience because I couldn't find them immediately. And you know, Trader Joe's, it's like a, it's like chaotic at all times. So I was like, I'm Very sorry, open. I'm out. Yeah. yeah, there's enough like people in Hawaiian shirts walking around that you couldn't be like, "Hey, where's the peas and carrots?" I had coming? to get out of there. I my time was up. See, when she <laughs> asked me for some, that. I'm on a mission. Like I'm getting it. Like I'll climb Mount Everest to get <laughs> okay. to get Megan her, you know, thing, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, okay, she says. Remember before Donna, I went and got something for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow, that's been happening for years. I know. <laughs> I knew that's that- what you're gonna say. Bad timing on my part. All right. Anyway, this episode is again sponsored by Runway, R N W Y, no vowels. Mm-hmm. And you can pronounce it N Ray. <laughs> Megan, what Very is fun. Runway? Runway is a brand spanking new collagen supplement that is also an electrolyte drink that also has some vitamins added to it, like vitamin D and B12 and a bunch of other things. So it's been very exciting since we have been sponsored by Runway. I'm seeing people's Runway bags popping up in a lot of people that I follow that they're tagging us. So I'm like, well, people are clearly trying it. And so far, I am hearing that people are very happy with it and that it tastes significantly better than some of the other collagen supplements they've been using. So, I mean, I feel like it's it's a pretty big win here. If you want to try it, you can go to, oh, I'm going to forget this. It's R-N-W-Y dot life? Life. Is that right? Life. Yes. Anyway, yeah. you can go to R-N-W-Y dot life and use the discount code feathers15, and that'll get you 15% off. To give it a whirl. Pretty good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So today is an exciting one because we are talking- Is it St. Patty's Day? No. No. Not, oh. right. not even close. Oh, you said it's exciting, I thought. Well- also as exciting is uh, Megan's recap of the Tokyo Marathon. Oh, arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> See, you're a better, better person than I am, and you learned a little bit of Japanese before you went. <laughs> I just felt like a jerk that I spoke nothing. <laughs> mm. Okay, so there's like a ton of questions that we want to dive into, but I feel like maybe we should just do a quick like overview of the day, like what your goals were going into it, what your travel schedule looked like. And I think people also want to know like the tips, like how do you, like when you go over there, who knows, maybe bagels are a weird thing over there. Yeah, we've got plenty of those questions. All that kind of stuff. So many questions. Yeah. 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 So... I started working with Abbott about this time last year, and I do a lot of education for their employee runners and some blogs and some webinars and things like this. And then a part of that contract was getting my six stars. So this was number five. So the overarching goal of going to Tokyo was to get my fifth star. But Meg and I talked and I was like, well, it's a flat course. It's cool. I do much better in cool races. So we were like, maybe Tokyo should be our goal race. So we kind of pivoted around Christmas time and decided that we were going to go for it. Two weeks later, my hamstring got cranky. So we were like, well, we can't do too much speed. I was still able to run marathon pace, but not able to do some of the faster stuff. So we were like, okay, let's see how this works. You couldn't, you couldn't go ham on it. 
<laughs> no. Couldn't go yeah, ham on that hammy. Because, <laughs> again, the overarching goal that. is to get this six stars, right? So, like, I wasn't going to break myself training for Tokyo. So we, you know, scaled things back a little. But training still went okay. And then Sloan gave me this nasty cold that felt like COVID, but apparently wasn't testing for COVID. I don't know. Maybe the flu something. And, of course, that was during peak week. So that felt lovely. Um, so that was during peak week and I still did all my long runs, but they just felt awful. Like they felt terrible. Like I wasn't even, I was about 10 seconds off marathon pace and it felt like I was sprinting a 5k. And then I got norovirus a week out when was laid on my patootie with a very high fever and body aches. And that was, um, six days before I was supposed to leave. So once I got to Tokyo, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like this has been one of the most riddled with obstacle training cycles I've ever had. And there's always plus, you, obstacles. The travel. Yeah. Plus half, you know, it's 14 hours ahead. Yeah. I like that lost a nuts. day going. It's crazy. It's crazy. So very quickly I was like, all right, the goal of this marathon is to go out, see how I feel. However I feel I'm doing it. <laughs> you know, the goal was obviously to finish. And, you know, so that was, that was kind of where we, where we started the race at. So your journey over there, I think it's what a 16 hour, 14 hour flight, something like that. What Mm -hmm. did you get? Did you sleep? And then when you got there, were you like totally off on the timing or what did that look like for you? Yeah. So, you know, there's no direct flights out of Cleveland. So they took me through Chicago. So I got there and then I want to say my flight left around like noon or something. Anyways, flash forward, I landed in Tokyo at like 730 p.m., on Thursday. So it was like time to go back to bed, but I had slept, but you know, my body Uh. didn't think it was bedtime. So that was very, very strange. Um, I did call and somehow finagle a free upgrade to like the bed area in the front, which was nice. Absolutely clutch on the way out. I mean, I just, so wait, so let's talk about that a little bit before you just brush over that. (laughs) So when you're doing long flights and this is a, I think a good Tokyo tip. Yeah. When we found out we were going to Tokyo and we were getting the flights, I made sure that we at least had business class. Yeah. So yeah. if you're not in business class, you're like four seats across, very tight. Like you basically have about a foot and a half, maybe a foot and a half of space for your butt. And then you are crammed in there with other people. And because you're on the flight so long, people are eating, they're getting up and going to the bathroom. It's, it is not like being crammed into a two hour flight. This is, a whole day of being on top of somebody. Mm -hmm. So business classes, I think just if you can, you at least got to get there. The bed class that that Feathers is talking about, I mean, that is, that's the gold ticket. Like, (laughs) yeah, you can recline, you got a little TV in there. You got your own little space. Privacy. Uh, I mean, it was a game changer. Like I could leave my laptop out. I had my TV. I could sit up and eat. I could lay down and rest. Honestly, it did not. So I'm saying that because stress or the travel over was not stressful. Like it it literally just felt like a peaceful 14 hours to myself, which all of you know, we never get that in life. (laughs) So it was like, this is lovely. (laughs) It's like, this feels like a vacation right now. Okay. So you get there 7 PM. Do you end up sleeping? So it was like time to go back to bed. By the time we came back and like took a shower, it was 830. So the whole Abbott crew was like, hey, come out to dinner. And I was like, it's 830. Like then I have to dry my hair and get dressed again, you know. So I ended up just staying there and I had like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich I had packed and I just ate in the room and took some Unisom and melatonin and like forced myself Mm -hmm. to go to sleep because I was like, I don't know how else to turn this over. And that kind of worked. The beds there were so uncomfortable. They were like hard as a rock. And it, it was like not super See, great. See, I sleep. love the beds yeah. hard. Did you and like them like that? Yeah. And the toilets are amazing. I, I could sleep on the toilet. I was to ask you about the toilet. Okay. Dude, Let me I, tell we you. are savages in this country. <laughs> we are. I don't are. know what's we're wrong gross. with us. <laughs> there must be some sort of toilet paper like mafia out there that's like, we are going to continue making toilet paper and making the yeah. money off Americans wiping their ass. Because... The Japanese toilets, it is like living in another Same. time. It's like, yeah. I feel like the future. Heated Did you, seats. okay, like Thomas can talk about this for hours. I was like, sure, it's fine. It's great. Like, are you that excited about it? Oh, no. I actually thought the whole like it washing my butt for me was very strange. I was like, that's my job, not yours. Like, <laughs> thank you though. Um, but no, having some hamstring issues, that heated seat 
was oh, yeah. lovely. I was like, it felt so good to sit on that heated seat. So I might have sat there a little longer. <laughs> Again, no like- kids to bust in, no dog to bust in. It was lovely. <laughs> And I feel like it takes a day or two to get used to the heated seat because it feels like someone was just on it. <laughs> yes. Know, it's like, it it took then, me by surprise the first time. Yeah. 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 Did you? And I mean, you can play like you can play music in the public bathrooms. Like, so that was the other thing. The the airport bathrooms, which the Cleveland airport bathrooms, like I'm going to get a disease in there. They are disgusting. So yeah. I walk into these ones. They start playing music for me and the toilet seat comes up on its own. And I was like, wait, I'm in a airport (laughs) yeah they must i always think people who live in japan must come to the united states and think we're all like heathens like yeah well that's what i'm thinking clean there you hear about people going to the middle east or something and there's like the toilets that are just a hole in the floor yeah like i feel like the japanese probably come over here and they're like why like what why do you do this to people exactly exactly it's like crazy so when we were there, it was still kind of COVID time and everyone mm. was wearing masks. Were they still wearing masks over there? I was or no? thinking about you guys because I remember all your pictures. You had masks on. Everybody yeah. had masks on. There was definitely still a lot more people with masks on than in the U.S. But if I had to guess, I would say like a fifth of the people had okay. masks on. It was so not the majority. Less. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that is one thing that I felt yeah. we missed out on because half of yeah. traveling is people watching yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And when I everybody's agree. covered up, you can't, can't yeah. really see it. So, I agree. Yeah. I was okay, I have more questions too. about that heading into race morning, but maybe yeah. we should answer some questions before we get to race day, although a lot of them are around that. So um, we kind of talked about travel and, like, the timing of stuff. Did you try and, like, do anything before you left to try and change, like, your body and the time of things? And then yeah. what did you do the day before or two days before for the carb loading? Yeah. So Thursday, it was weird because I should have been carb loading on the plane, which I, I was, but like it wasn't time to carb load in Ohio. So it was like, that's right. definitely something people need to keep track of because you'll you'll like all of a sudden be like, shoot, I missed a day of carb loading because you fast forward, you know? I, yeah. I didn't even think about that. So when yeah. you, you yeah. left on a Thursday, but you got no, there. No, I left on a Wednesday at lunch. I left on oh, a Wednesday okay. at lunch and then I landed at bedtime on Thursday. So like oh, okay. I had to make sure, right, that I was carb loading, even though it felt early but it wasn't, you know, from when I landed. Um, I did not do anything to get myself prepared. I had so many people inbox messaging me, telling me I needed to change things. And I was like, you guys, I literally just almost died from the norovirus three days ago. Like, I just need to get there. Like, I'm not changing a darn thing. Plus, a lot of it is getting up earlier and going to bed earlier. And Mm -hmm. I... Like I already get up at four. Like I right. can't. Like I, I just can't change much. So and it were honestly, it worked fine for me. Like I said, I forced myself to go right to bed. I didn't sleep well the first night, but the second night I slept like a baby. And that was that would have been two nights that's before key. the race. Right. Yeah. That's key. So um, and then the night before the race, I did not sleep well, but I felt fine. Like I don't think the jet lag impacted my performance at all. Okay. So what did carb loading look like on Friday and Saturday? Because we I didn't do a very good job when I was there, so but I feel like you did a better job. Yeah, and you were running for fun, and I was trying to see how I could do, so that's a little different. Yeah, so I had so many tips going into this, um, and everybody was telling me that the three, like, the best way to compare it is like a convenient mart in the United States. So there's 7-11. Lawson's. Yeah, 7-Eleven, Lawson's, and Family Mart. And everybody was saying everyone has a favorite. They're all a little different. So I was like, made it a mission on Friday to go to all three. I was like, you have to check them all out. You have to see what they have. The first one I went into, I was totally overwhelmed. Like there was zero English on any of the food. And I was like, oh, and I like grabbed one thing. And then, you know, for the other ones, I was a little more prepared. But um, so I, I played around in those and like looked up a Japanese nutrition label to see like where were the carbs where was the fat where was the fiber so that I could try to find out like is this sweet potato bun a good idea or or are these buns filled with chocolate pudding actually okay you know so I kind of tried to myself they were good I I carb loved with both those things so which which was your favorite between the Lawson and the 7-Eleven and the what was the other family you know family mart honestly I I didn't have like an immediate favorite. They all looked the same to me, but apparently it's nuanced and they're not actually the same, but they all looked very well, similar to me. The reason I love the 7-Eleven is because we have 7-Eleven here. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like. Yeah. And felt like it, you were yeah. like, well, it, 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 the logo looked familiar, but when you go inside, it was like a different world. And I'm like, yes. if these 7-Elevens were here in the United States, yeah. these are cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I mean, for people who aren't aware, like it's a full service like food industry in there. There's hot foods, there's prepared meals, there's all the convenience foods you would normally have. They're much, much bigger than like a 7-Eleven here. And you can like eat there for full meals. Not, I mean, there's not sit down dining, but like you could get the right foods to have like full meals while you're in there. And I saw a lot of people going in and doing that, you know, that were more local there. So that was fun. So I, I did grab like a lot of random carbs there. Their bread is so different than ours. Like in, it's like real thick and like, like the texture the of it. it's almost like yeah it's almost like angel food cake or like it was a uh-huh. very it was very different um and then well i guess i should rewind breakfast we did a buffet in the hotel with the whole abbott crew and joan benoit and you know she was getting her six star so um you know that was fun and there was tons of carbs were you at the same hotel that we were at yeah i think so keo plaza that buffet was amazing Sick. like Insane, i love right? everything yeah. you wanted now i made the yeah. mistake of thinking the first day Because some of the foods look foreign and you're like, whatever. I was like, I'm going to try a little bit of everything. And you get some weird stuff there, like fish for breakfast. Like um, there was these like things that were like pickled with a pit inside of them. I don't I don't even know what fruit it was, but I remember biting into it, not knowing there was going to be a pit in it. And I was like, oh, there goes my jaw. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But like there was everything there, like rice, eggs, bread, like you name it. It was in that thing. I love that breakfast. Yeah, that was good. That's and definitely they have a, good a tip. cappuccino machine. Yes, like if people are going to Tokyo, like check out your hotel and see if they have like a buffet breakfast. A lot of them did because I mm-hmm. think that's like a super easy way to start your day with very familiar food. Because at least ours had like a Japanese breakfast side and an American breakfast side, which was so funny because they had pasta with sauce on it and the American side. That was the side. Italian oh breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's there was so hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think that was super helpful, like a good way to start the carb load. And then from there, you know, I was popping into these marts and looking for some different carb things. I had carried like, uh, some Morton solid bars on me to like the expo. So I didn't get too behind. Cause I think that's another good tip is when we're traveling and we're far away and we're carb loading, we get stuck in an Uber. We get stuck in a line at the expo. People told me they spent two and a half hours getting their bibs on Thursday at the expo. Luckily it was not that crazy on Friday, but um, like you've got to be prepared. So put some purse snacks in there, backpack snacks, whatever they are, so that you don't get too behind and then like have to make up all those carbs at dinner because that's just miserable. On on this t- subject, when we went, we went to like this almost like a mall that had like food places in it and like an mm-hmm. entire grocery store. And this Meg, not the feathers Meg, but the one sitting next to me here. How frustrated were you in trying to find something to eat? Oh, I was so I was so frustrated because like you were saying, yeah. like when you're looking at food labels and stuff, like I can't read it. I don't understand mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. I don't know the language. So it's hard for me to communicate with people to ask, like, where can I just get a piece of bread or something? So I ended mm-hmm. up leaving. The guys all got like these, I don't know, like stuff with meat in them. And I was like, even though I'm not racing this, I'm not gambling with my mm-hmm. food choices a day before I got the like marathon. dumplings. So yeah. I um yeah. I went to Starbucks and got a scone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had star I had lunch at Starbucks one day and it looked like a ham and cheese baguette and then like this mm-hmm. little bean like bun that had like red beans or something in it. Um yeah, because it looked kind of familiar. But I'm the same way. I mean, some people have guts of steel and they can eat anything and know they're going to be fine. But I feel 100% of my race nerves in my stomach. Like, I don't realize I'm nervous until I realize my stomach is bothering me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my nerves, right? You know, so I'm always very careful not to, like, do anything that could potentially upset my stomach. And I've done this long enough to know, like, what I need to do. So I wasn't super adventurous that night. Friday night, I did go out for sushi because I was like, you have to eat sushi here. You know what I mean? Um, And it made me laugh because like sushi is so different (laughs) in Japan than it is here. There was not much rice. And then there was a little bit of wasabi holding the piece of fish on top. And I'm not a huge wasabi fan, but I was like, well, that's part of this. So like we're eating this. And then I was thinking like trying to calculate the carbs for the rice in my mind. And I'm like, this isn't nearly enough. So I went to 7-Eleven and got some high chew because my kids wanted every flavor of high chew. So I bought myself some and uh, those are pretty delicious too. (laughs) That's amazing. So you were, were you pretty meticulous about calculating your carbs over there? On Friday and Saturday I was. Yeah. I tried to keep, but a lot of that for me is like mental confidence of knowing I've gotten mm-hmm. what I need. Okay. And so. so then what did day before look like? Did you just do something similar? Breakfast, buffet, and more so carbs? So day before, 
No. What did I? Oh, I ended up doing a shakeout with the ASICs crew that was there. Um, so I just ate a bunch of graham crackers. SRC? Um, yeah, I think. I think that's what it was called. Yeah, I ran into uh, Colleen that works for ASICs and um, Emily Abate in the elevator. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'll come run with you. <laughs> yeah, it was they don't do yeah. like They don't do like shakeout or group runs in Japan. It was different. So like yeah. the year that we went out there. Yeah. Yeah. And did a group run. That was like the first one. Really? So like, yeah. So yeah. it was like, yeah, we were crazy. talking to a local there and he was like, this doesn't happen. He's like, this is so cool. And I was like, That's oh, crazy. OK. And so like yeah. that, yeah. that, when yeah. I saw the pictures, I was like, oh, they're in the same park that we were yeah. in. Yeah. They're starting off. It looked like their route was a little more fun. Like we just did loops around that park. It mm-hmm. looks like you guys went out into the streets and stuff like that. Yeah. The pictures looked a little cooler. Yeah. But the the main thing about it that was um interesting to me i was like oh look now they're doing it and like i was like that's so cool and the coolest thing about specifically that asic shakeout was like there was little pockets of people from all over the country like the the japanese asics crew was up front like and being like who's from and i kid you there was like 20 countries and there was like five people like all speaking a different language like it was really cool to see like all the different cultures coming together for that shakeout so different than what we're used to in the United States. <laughs> well, no, what's interesting is we met people that now have come to like, so uh, we met Will Fernandez out there. Like we met all these people that now come to the shakeouts that cool. we do in New York or wherever and yeah. follow us on, on the gram. And we do this and we, we met yeah. them in Japan and they're from Brooklyn, New York. It's wild. So it was like, yeah. it was pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Okay. So then what did, what did dinner look like? The night before. Oh, so I ran, you know, there's probably like 12 people from Instagram that were also in Japan and we never actually met up, but we were just constantly messaging each other with like tips. So this one woman was like, wait, I just moved hotels and there's the best bakery beneath my hotel. Um, I can't even, the, the hotel was the not, and I'm trying to read more than, I think it was in English. I think it was more than was the bakery. They had everything you could, it, and it looked like home. It had soft pretzels. It had bagels. It had these oh, like I think I saw a picture buns. Of yeah. Like it looked like my Brimfield bakery that I go to at home. So I had, we had seen that on the morning run. So on my way home from that museum I went to, I just had the Uber drop me off there because it was a half mile from the hotel. And I literally bought two bagels, two buns, a soft pretzel. So like probably 300 grams of my carb load was just munching Mm -hmm. on that throughout the day, which honestly felt so comforting to me because like I said, I wanted familiar things that I knew weren't going to upset my stomach. So I kind of ditched the, the traditional Japanese culture food for the rest of that carb load, but it worked fine. I mean, I felt like the ramen did a good job of carb carb loading us. Yeah. Yeah. We did some Again, wrong, I'm with Meg. Like, I don't know what meat is in there. I, I Is the egg cooked all the way through? Like, these mm-hmm. are weird things that go through my head that I just didn't want to gamble with before the race. Oh, I was like, this is delicious. Let me ha- yeah. eat this for the rest of my life. I love that. I wish yeah. I was more carefree with it, but I'm not. And, I mean, it was, there's a piece of pork on it. And you're right. right. It's, a, it's a soft, hard-boiled egg. Mm-hmm. So it has a little bit, but yeah. Man. Yeah. It's good. I know. There's some good options. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about race day. There's a bunch of questions about that, but I have a question logistically because, like I said, when we were there, it was still kind of the COVID era. So Mm -hmm. we had to carry our phones and go through like three different security checkpoints. What did, did that look like the same for you? So you were supposed to carry your phone. You were encouraged to carry your phone, but it wasn't like someone was checking to make sure you had it. Um, And then, yes, we had one security checkpoint that was like a metal detector, but then two other security checkpoints too. So we had three as well. Yeah. But the thing, the thing with the phone that I thought was helpful for us though, it's an, it's not, there it goes again. (laughs) It's not a, um, it's not an out and back course or a loop course. Right. It's, you end up in a totally different spot. So having your phone was a nice thing at the finish, yeah. especially oh, yeah. because Robbie got lost. Yeah, he was I got like lost. Three blocks away, like super close to us. But I you got know, very like lost. when you have marathon brain, yeah. well, the and only you're like trying to. Oh, it yeah. also ends like in a T, so yeah. you kind of go down, and then if you're on the wrong side of the street when you yes. exit the the finish line, Robbie went uh, left when he should have gone right, 
Mm -hmm. And so he's trapped on the other side of the marathon and there's fences and gates yeah. and we're down there. Same. Of course he was the one feeling the, the worst yeah. after the marathon. The rest Aww. of us are like, let's go yeah. party. And Robbie's like, I am dying. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. Well, and there's such us. sticklers about rules in Japan. Yeah. I did the same thing happen to me. And I just, I was like, I need to get to that building right there. I can see it. And they were like, no, no, you can't yeah. go here. I had to walk like yeah. a mile around to get there. Mm -hmm. And this might surprise some people because I am very type A, but like if a, if a rule or a law doesn't make sense to me, I'm absolutely going to try to break it. I'm like, that makes no sense. Like, why can't I cross right there? You know? So like I kept telling myself, you're in Japan. You can't be breaking the rules. Like you and will if, go it, to jail. Behave yourself. <laughs> like, And of course it like being a 5'11 female wearing alpha flies, probably 6'2". <laughs> you probably <laughs> blended in yep. with the locals so really well. easily. <laughs> so well. Very clear that I did not belong. <laughs> Um, okay. What did you do for breakfast the morning of? Oh, graham crackers. You know it. I didn't even. The only tweak, though, which is probably a good lesson for all of us, is I couldn't sleep. I was wide awake at 3.30 a.m. And I didn't need to be up till like 7 because the race starts at 9.15 and our hotel was the host hotel. So it was like 200 yards Damn. from mm -hmm. the start. The, the group, the Abbott group, like um, meeting beforehand that had some breakfast was two floors down from me, you know, like I had nowhere to be. So I was up very, very early. So immediately I was like, you're going to have to eat more than you normally eat, you know? So like if we do have, if we're up for six hours before the race, you know, four graham crackers aren't going to cut it anymore. So slowly over the morning between 3.30 and 8.30, I ate an entire sleeve of graham crackers and my coffee and a liquid IV. Yeah. Yeah. But it worked So great. what's crazy is but, but because of a later start for us, we went down to the buffet breakfast. And yeah. had full breakfast. And we yeah. still had like an hour and a half to go back up to our room and just yeah. sit. So it yeah. was probably one of the best fuel. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And I had such a great day. It was probably one of the biggest fuel days I ever had before yeah. a race. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I almost treated it like a Boston or a New York because I had that much time from when I was awake to when I was going to run. So I was like, I better eat more. So, and it worked fine. Yeah. Okay. By the way, these first questions I'm asking are from Christina Bracato. Um, okay. okay. Where did you store all of your gels and fuel and did you bring a handheld? You're not allowed to bring a handheld to the Tokyo marathon. You're not allowed to bring oh, a safety plastic. blanket. You Are you okay? I know you can, <laughs> I, it, barely, barely. We can talk about that when we talk about during the race, but, um, I mean, there was no one carrying bottles, like no one, no one even tried to sneak it in. I had like a uh, throwaway top. And I think if I would have tucked it between my shorts and my top, I think I could have gotten through and no one would have said anything but again like i'm not breaking the law or encouraging yeah. anyone else to break the law <laughs> over in in japan um and no one was carrying them out there so it would have been like a thor like it would have been very obvious if someone yeah. had a handheld when we weren't supposed to so they'll um, pull you off no, the course i did not have I, I i agree i think they might yeah yeah i was i was too scared to try to break the rules so um no i did not have a handheld and then where did i <laughs> store my gels so i wore almost the same outfit as I wore in Berlin. And I made a reel about this because no one believed what I did. So, you know, any women out there, we've got a sports bra on, right? We know that we never put gels behind the sports bra because those will chafe like crazy, right? Gels can't be against our skin. So I had a sports bra on and then I had a Lululemon crop top that had a built-in sports bra. So I, I lined up seven gels between my sports bra and that crop like shelf, right? So it was literally just straight across my chest. I had all my gels and then I had um, the salt stick chews for some sodium like tucked in also. So I, there was a lot happening there, but I don't normally have a lot happening there. So it works It's like a fine. whole buffet on your chest. It was. And literally it's so easy to just grab a gel there. Um, so that's so nothing in the shorts or anywhere mm -hmm. else. They were, everything was nope. right in the top. Yep. Top shelf. Yep. Top shelf, baby. <laughs> they have a tracksmith bra that does have a double, double layer, layer oh, so that smart. you can do that in the front. Um, I've used it before. Smart. I've also done the gels straight against the skin. Yeah. Which we all know how that works out. Mm. It's real rough. A shower is tricky. <laughs> but also, I always get nervous. Like, So when you're talking, you have the shelf and then the sports bra. Like, Sometimes mine would slide down. Mm. Like between yeah. the two. And so that always made me real nervous. My um, crop was tight. Like I have a very okay. broad rib cage. So it was very tight across there. Okay. Um, 
So I knew that they wouldn't. But that's something to think about. I saw that Bandit has a new crop top that has like yeah. literate, like I just love that they're supporting fueling. There's like four or six like little spots to slide gels all around the top. It looks great. Yeah. There, there's a lot of brands that are getting better with yeah. it and I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. We already talked about your good night's sleep. Would you recommend taking anything to help you sleep the night before, like melatonin? I know you did Friday or Thursday, but mm-hmm. would you do it the night before? Yeah, yeah, I did. But I do that regularly at home, so that okay. wasn't something different. You do too, yeah. though, don't you, babe? Yeah. yeah. So that's like yeah. not not anything new the day before. No. Race. I mean, you mm-hmm. haven't the the thing with the melatonin. I think if you're used to it, I wouldn't probably do it the night before a marathon if you're not right. Haven't used it before because it can I cause agree. some people to be a little groggy the next yeah. day. But if mm-hmm. you've used it before, mm-hmm. I think it works great. And the only thing is when we went to Tokyo, Robbie woke up in the middle of the night and I think he took a melatonin at like 2 a.m. He did. Oh, God. He regretted, he regretted <laughs> yeah. that quite a bit. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he makes a lot of real oh, questionable decisions. Robbie. Yeah. Love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Did you listen to music or a podcast while running? Nah. I don't. I never listen to music when I'm running, even when I'm training. So no. Well, even like I, I would say, especially when you're traveling to a different country, mm-hmm. this is a once in a lifetime experience. Mm-hmm. Take the headphones out, mm-hmm. experience the whole marathon. And also mm-hmm. if you're wearing headphones during a marathon, that eliminates any chance of you to like work with another person, talk That's to another person say. while you're yeah. on the course. Yeah. Okay. You say it. Cause yeah. like you were there. I got I got so many feathers out there. Like, you guys, I don't even think my name's Megan anymore at this point. I know we were like, (laughs) did it stick? I'm like, there's not a question that that's just my name now, Um, both from spectators and from people on the course. Because you guys know there's four different out and backs. So, like, Mm -hmm. you could see people, like, I, you know, I got to see Elliot, you know, running and some of the other elite people. Was Elliot like feathers? (laughs) (laughs) No, we're not on first name basis yet. (laughs) I'm (laughs) dying. Um, and like, it was really cool. Like there was this one guy that ran up to me fairly early in the race and he was like, Hey, I'm on your wait list. (laughs) I was like, Oh, you know, so we're like, literally, I'm like, okay, when did you apply? All right, we'll try to get you in sooner, you know? And then there was this other guy that I met in the, um, the line, the customs line when we arrived and he listens to the podcast like religiously and listens to you guys on the drop. So we were chatting and then he, he found me in the start corral and we ran most of the race together. He, um, wanted to run a 248 and I was in my head like no we're not running that today Megan so like I kept like kind of backing off from him because I was like you don't need to be with him right now um but he was so sweet like at the turnarounds he would he would check on me like he'd either look back or find me and like okay you're good right like it was like I had a like someone looking out for me out there so shout out to uh he calls himself Spoonie. Um, I think his last name Spooner um but he'll also be a London but like he was wonderful like he was great okay yeah you bring up one of my favorite yeah. things about this course. So not only is the course fairly friendly as far as elevation gain and, and loss, but the out and backs were one of my They're favorites because cool. I don't normally, if I'm running a marathon that Megan's running, see you later. I'll see you at the finish. Mm-hmm. But this one, I got to see her like four or five times on the course and you could see like, oh, she's having fun. She's smiling. She's whooping it yeah. up. Of course, she was running Tokyo for fun. So she was like pacing a friend of ours. And you'd see her and she'd be like, Wah! and, you know, doing yeah. her normal stuff. Yeah. But it makes the course so much fun because you do see the yeah. leaders. You see the people who are behind you. You see it's it's great. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Yeah, definitely. Okay. A few more questions. This one, these are from Pedro. Gilvaz? Gilvaz? I voted for him. Um, He said, firstly, congrats on the sub three feathers. And he has a few questions. For pre-race breakfast, is it a good idea to consume an isotonic drink such as SIS, Beta Fuel, or Morton 320, along with some solid like a banana instead of bread or oatmeal? You know, I don't think there's research to support like that's superior. It's just what works for you and how you're going to get enough carbs in. So some of these drinks you can get like 60 to 100 grams of carbs in. Now we know our carb needs before a race are based on our body weight. So, you know, a larger male or a larger female is going to need more carbs than a very, very petite male or female. So I think, you know, if it's easier to drink some of it and then get a banana, you know, I think that's great. I do find, especially depending on the timing before the race, 
space, we may need some sort of solid food, right? A liquid is going to kind of pass through us a little quicker that we might then feel hungry. So like I would definitely, if you're going to have some sort of drink with a lot of carbs, make sure you pair it with something. But, you know, honestly, this is a, per- there are so many ways that we can get our carbs in before a race. It's just practicing before our long runs to make sure that's what works and, you know, just make sure we're getting enough then on race day. Okay, he said, I noticed that Megan usually wears compression socks. What benefit do they bring? Less muscle damage and fatigue or something related to GI stress? Or is it fashion? (laughs) Fashion. Yeah, right. Thomas is like, get rid of those, Megan. Those are not cute. I didn't wear them in New York City in that one. Okay. Um, It's funny. He knows the research then because there was a research study that looked at wearing tall compression socks at GI. I think we might have talked about it on here, actually which I I don't know that it actually correlates to that. But my reasoning for wearing the tall socks without going too deep into the weeds, um, I have arthritis in my big toes and they don't really bend anymore. So because of that, I uh, compensate. I roll out on my feet instead of rolling straight off my big toes just because they, I can't. So that really pisses off my calf. So I have a lot of propensity to calf strains and calf soreness and calf issues. And my first couple sub three marathons, uh, I got really bad calf cramps and I knew it was just from how I was rolling. So I kind of got in this habit of always wearing the tall socks. And then when I wear the tall socks, I've always had a good day. I don't think I need them anymore now that I have plated shoes because the plate will work for, as my big toe. So I don't think I do the funky toe off anymore as much. I mean, I've seen race photos. I still do it some, but not as much. So I can probably get away with not wearing them these days, but um, they're a little bit of a security blanket at this point because when I have had a good race, I've had them on. So I just keep wearing them and buying new clean white pairs. Okay. Lastly, magnesium supplementation before bed is increasingly recommended, aiming for better sleep quality and better muscle turnover. There are studies that prove these recommendations. He's asking, are there studies that prove these Mm. recommendations and what is the recommended dosage? I need to dive more into the magnesium research because I have to say I've been lazy looking into this more. My biggest thing is if we take 500 milligrams or more, we are going to have GI issues. So don't take more than 500 milligrams of magnesium in your day out of all of your supplements. So check that. I've had people come to me with that issue. Um, And then, you know, there is some research on magnesium and sleep. But like I said, to be completely honest, um, I haven't really dove into it too deeply yet. All right, so we need more info on that one, Pedro. Um, okay, how did you properly hydrate with no handheld rule? <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> I hated it. I'm not going to lie. Like, it just reconfirmed how much I love and need my handheld. It's not just a safety thing. It's, like, legit. I've said this before in here. I suck at drinking out of those cups. I think I did the best I possibly could have at this. You know, the pinch and the pour, you know, that everybody says. But there was twice that I pinched and poured and somehow also waterboarded myself. So it's up my nose. (laughs) Then I can't swallow. Then I can't breathe. And I'm like, this is just not cool. Like, a handheld is so much easier. Um, Did you use Picari Sweat? I didn't. I decided not to because oh. the Bakari sweat that you order in the United States is a different formulation than what's on course. And I that made it. me nervous. I, th- I was yeah. good. I, it's not that I disliked it. It's just that I couldn't get my hands on exactly what was going to be on the course to try. And there was a well, lot of different ingredients in it. You could have well, like the 7-11. Like the day before? She couldn't have tested know. it like on a run is what she yeah. said. Well, yeah. yeah. Whatevs. Yeah. And I'm not saying that to scare anyone. Again, that's just me. Like, I'm very meticulous about what goes in my body yeah. during and I'm right before say, a marathon. Yeah. It, it's pretty – I drank it the whole time we were there. So I yeah. w- once we got there, yeah. I, I started drinking it, and I didn't try it before yeah. in the United States. It, yeah. Like, you can't tell me it's any different than Gatorade or, you know, any of the other stuff that we get on course. The thing that I liked about the Japanese one, like, sometimes you go and you get Gatorade on a course – and depending on how someone mix that powder, you, you could have a very strong Gatorade or you could mm-hmm. have a very weak Gatorade. And I really find mm-hmm. it often is on the weak side com- comparatively. Um, but the Picari sweat was pretty consistent the whole way through. That's good. Yeah, maybe it was pre-mixed. But the other interesting thing about hydration on this course is – they don't have stops every mile like they do in the majors in the United States. Well, plus it's all 
kilometers there, which is a whole other ball game that throws you <laughs> off your game if you that's not what you're used to. Um, but they did have a lot of opportunities for both the Picari sweat and the water, and the the lines were very long. So you what you were supposed to do was you were supposed to grab fluids at the numbered table that was the last number on your bib. So my bib number was a eighty eight thousand and five. So I was supposed to stop at five to grab my water or my Picari sweat, right? So these tables were so long that, I mean, honestly, you could have, I tried to stick to it again, really trying to follow the rules here. <laughs> and, you know, but you had plenty of opportunities to grab more, to grab another one. So that one time I poured it up my nose, I just grabbed another one. Um, but then the other thing that you guys probably saw there too, is like, you are not allowed to litter on that course. It kind of reminded me of the half Ironman I did. Like you get penalized if you drop like your Morton wrapper on the ground or something. So um, there's between each, like it was like um, bib one and two, and then there'd be a trash can and then there'd be another table of a fluid and then a trash can. So you were supposed to, you know, throw them into those trash cans. And I'll tell you what, if there was 38,000 people out there, and we could all figure out how to throw away our can- our trash. I'm like, why aren't we doing this in the United States? We are such pigs. <laughs> like yeah. you, like in Boston, they're like raking cups. Uh-huh. And I'm like, wait, yeah. if we can physically do this, and it really wasn't that hard to just right. throw away your trash. Um, but I will say they didn't want you throwing away your gel wrappers or like I discarded my gloves. And I did notice there was volunteers pulling stuff that wasn't cups out of there. So they must discard the cups differently. So when they ask you yeah. not to throw your personal trash away, like I felt bad after I did it. I was like, oh shoot, maybe I really shouldn't have done that. Um, but it is, I mean, it's it's a whole different experience to be thinking about, okay, put your gel wrapper back in your crop top, put your trash in this thing. But it really was not a distraction to the race. I thought it was helpful because then you weren't worried about tripping over cups constantly. Yeah. Yeah, that is nice. They, yeah, It's just lovely over there. I know, um, it really is. <laughs> okay, what causes diaphragm issues when running and how did you cure slash fix them? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So through, taking a step back about the race. So Meg had told me like, you know, hit like 630s for the first half. And then if you feel good, drop into the 620s was kind of the, the race advice here. And I started and I felt incredible. Like I haven't felt that good running and I can't tell you in months, probably since before Christmas. And I looked down and it was like 616. I was like, Megan, like <laughs> slow down. So I kept consciously slowing myself into the 620s and that still felt super comfortable so I was just like you know what like don't be dumb like stay in the high 620s but like maybe you finally feel better and this is gonna be okay that's what you did in Berlin in the fall like it's probably okay so I felt great like and my fitness felt great my body felt great and then right around mile 20 I just started to get these two diaphragm cramps, like kind of right under your rib cage on both sides that felt like they were like pulling my back down. Like it felt like I couldn't inflate my lungs backwards. You know what I mean? It felt like it was like, like pulling me forward and I could not felt, I didn't, I felt like I could not get a full breath. So why that happened, I'm still looking into the last time it happened was in, um, Houston, when my we found out my ferritin was terrible, so I got my labs drawn today. So we'll see if that's it. I, we I did too. too. We all went to inside trackers today. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so much blood. <laughs> right, I know. So we'll see if that's it. But I don't. I've been taking my supplement. Not not amazing to be totally transparent. So I'm like, I don't know if that's it. I don't know if it was my, you know, your diaphragm and your back are very interconnected. So I don't know if it was from sleeping on a hard bed. My back was pretty sore. I don't know if that was a piece of it. I have a feeling it had something to do with my breathing um, that triggered it all, but I Could really don't know. Could it also be that like you just yeah. had that, what, all those diseases you had. What, what were you <laughs> yeah, right. That was you another had, thought. I have Pannonia. been very ill the yeah, past month. A lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was all the right. things you had? Right. Or like sometimes I've had that feeling when I get into like I have aller- like seasonal allergies and like I notice I breathe funny if I get into certain mm-hmm. things I'm allergic to. And then I have some of those cramps, but my allergies were fine over there. So I'm honestly really not sure. I'm curious to see what my ferritin comes back. I mean, they're so good over there. They clean know. up the pollen. They're like sweeping. They probably it, do. You know, washing the leaves off. It was and <laughs> washing. Each yeah. Leaf. Each leaf is being oh my gosh, extracted. Insane. Yeah. 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 Okay, we had multiple questions about this, so I have to ask it. Um, the porta potties. People said yes. that they heard there was no bathrooms at the start, and that there wasn't many tons. out on the course. So, what was your experience? 
Yeah, I got a lot of DMs about this too. I'm glad we're talking about it. So first and foremost, the porta potty situation at the start was dismal. Like I felt really bad for anybody who had to wait in those lines. So you know us heathens in America, you know, we line up and there's just like clumps of us waiting for each porta potty. This, it was a single file line. And whichever porta potty opened first is what you went to. So there was a single file line that was like a half a mile long and it was like weaved around for these like 12 porta potties. Now that was just for corral A and B. So I'm assuming each chunk of corrals also had like 15 porta potties. But seriously, like I I would highly recommend if that makes you nervous, stay in a hotel that's close enough that you can just use your hotel bathroom because there's plenty of them. That's what I did. I never used a porta potty at the start. I just made sure I went and then like a half hour before the race, you know, walked down to get in my corral and then never had to. to, Didn't you have to use a porta potty before the race? No. um, Robbie again. You or Brandon had to pee. And uh, the guys ended up just running. There was like bushes right after the start line. And he ended up just running, and like all the guys did it, and just like there was a yeah. line of dudes just pissing Peeing. in these. Was there really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't and see that anyone. That was the only. That was yeah. the only crazy thing because it is so, like, orderly yeah. Yeah. and clean yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, people were losing there. Like yeah. there was like uh, planters yeah. that line the start, and dudes were just pulling up to it and yanking a short up and <laughs> dropping it in there. Yeah, but during the course. Um, I only saw one visible porta potty, but I saw multiple volunteers with a sign that pointed an arrow and said 200 yeah. meters to the porta potty. So they were just a little bit removed from the course. They weren't mm. like right on the course like we're used to here, meters. like for Boston. Or, <laughs> right. I was like, that's one of them was said 500 a meters. Tenth of I was a like, mile. That's yeah. Not that close. Right. So, yeah, I mean, they're available. Like, don't be nervous. If you need a porta potty, it's very well described, like where you can find them. You, might have to jet off the course to go get them though was the only kind of downside um okay a couple more questions pros and cons of salt stick chews versus capsules i went through the same thought process when i was like you're going to use water and morton which has no salt and you need sodium you can see in my race pictures like the salt that's like down my neck and it was only 40 degrees um so the pros of the chews are that you can chew them Right. If, if you can't fathom. Right. If you can't fathom taking a pill while you're running, like chews are, are your best bet. The, the con to the ch- to choose is one chew has 50 milligrams of sodium. So you have to take I took 10 <laughs> like you have to take a lot to get a meaningful amount of sodium, whereas a pill has like 200 or a little more than 200 milligrams of sodium. So like you get more bang for your buck if you can take the pill. It's just whether you can or not. OK. This person said, congrats, what was your post-race meal? Wait, what are they saying congrats about? What was your post-race meal of choice? Also, did your stomach handle the different snacks and such out there uh, that you wouldn't typically eat in the States? Yeah, my stomach was totally fine. Some of it was new stuff, some of it wasn't, but I didn't have any, not an ounce of stomach issues the whole time I was there, which was awesome. Um what did I eat after? So Abbott had this awesome like post-race hospitality. We got to use like um, Norma Tech boots and like hang out. And then they brought us each like a plate. <laughs> I was sitting next to, so like I said, Joan Samuelson got her six star. So she and I are sitting there and they bring out this food and we're both like, what is this? What is all this stuff? <laughs> like we could not figure out what was on the plate and like not many people spoke English to tell us. She has some allergies. So I was like trying things like, oh, I don't think you can have that one, <laughs> you know, and, like, so I don't even know what we ate. I feel like there was some, some like little pieces of steak. There was some fish, there was a salad, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then later we went out to dinner and sat at this huge table that had this massive like lazy Susan in the middle. And we just kept ordering food and just spinning it and letting like all of us try the different things. So that was, that was fun. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, last but very important question. Why the Nike shorts instead of the bandit shorts? <laughs> I can't believe people noticed that because in my flat lay, I posted the bandit shorts, which I wore in um, Berlin. And then I had taken my Nike shorts, which I wore in Chicago. They're basically the same. They're split shorts, both of them, you know. So race day morning, I put on the bandit shorts and I just... I didn't, they looked sloppy. Like they looked too big for me, you know? So, and I remember thinking they looked too big in Berlin. So I took them off and put on. Yeah. People were like, you look like a clown. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I think I just bought too big of shorts, not the against bandit. Um, so I put my Nike ones on and instantly I was like, I like those. And you know, it's important to like feel like you look good on race morning. So I just left those on. Dude, that's yeah. the most important thing. You got to right? You gotta look good to feel good. Yeah. The, yeah. The time I had my Believe a... in the Run hat on. I was like, ch- yeah, like yeah. channeling, like being with you guys, even though you weren't there. It was great. Yeah. That's the worst thing yeah. about your trip, I think, was that <laughs> you didn't go with us. <laughs> I, that we weren't there. I hated yeah. that. I The whole time I was there, I was like, I wish Meg and Thomas were here. Like, it would have been so and much. Like, I don't know. We would have gone to so a shrine together. We right? went to a neat park, yeah. shopping. I know. We should just be a package stuff. deal from now on. I know. Like, I we know. have it should to just be, be the three of us. Times. or Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we haven't mentioned it yet, but you ran a two fifty three. We don't need to talk about Wait, the seconds. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? At first, didn't you get a poster made with two fifty four on it? This yeah. is good. Wait, I'm not the only one who did this. So in the app, it only had net time, but it didn't list it as that. So any of us who like rushed to go get our posters, <laughs> right? Yeah, that maybe get our posters right away. Got our net time. Which I kid you not, I was in line getting the correct poster on Monday and there was four people behind me that also had gotten the, same the wrong poster. So I was like, well, I'm not the only vain one here that is like coming back. Um, so it originally said I ran a 25416. And then I got it restamped with a 25359. And now when you look at my results, it's a 25359. 58. So I'm like, can oh. we get our times right? <laughs> like it's changed three just, times. <laughs> you just want me to draw like a little line on oh, that line I, to make it an eight? Honestly, you guys know it's because it went from a 54 to a 53. I had yeah, to get a new one. If it, it would have yeah. still been in the same number, I probably wouldn't have gone back. But I'm going to try to hit all the 50s, right? Like I've run a 250, I don't think... a 253, a 256, a 257. I'm going to try to get them all in there. Tracksmith wasn't uh, what there about when New we York? were there. We're going to have to <laughs> to run it hard. Do something different sub in New York. <laughs> Can you guys go sub three? We might in New have York, to try. Think? I don't know. Sure. We'll wait. Make it sure. Too. I mean, I would try. Yeah. yeah. You see know how that you goes. guys wouldn't be able to do like the. Oh yeah, we would. Yeah. We you're would. no way you're going sub three. Oh, Two fifty nine fifty nine. We can party yeah. that pace. Meg yeah. running back Dare and us. forth. <laughs> if you guys do, I'm going to cut out there with a baseball bat and whack one of your knees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please don't. Mine hurts. I'll, I'll start with you, socks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I won't wear my socks. You won't be able to find me. I won't be able to find you. I, there's no, yeah, there's no other <laughs> combo of clowns running around waving the crowd on. That's that true. We are find. pretty epic duo. <laughs> oh, geez. All I have to do to find you is put like a uh, slap this for power up and you guys are attracted to it like moths to a flame. Pretty much. <laughs> ah, I got to jump. <laughs> exactly. Let me do it. Let me do yeah. a five foot vertical jump in the middle there of a marathon. None of that. In Tokyo, yeah. there wasn't any. No, they're very low-key. quiet. There yeah. was none of gamba that. Day, gamba day, gamba day. There um, was a lot of people dressed up in costume, but not yeah. like spectating, not running. Yep. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, I don't know. I, I felt like the the thing you heard the most was gamba day, gamba day, gamba day the whole time. Yeah, there was something they were saying that sounded like as like Megan. Like that was like the end of it. And I kept thinking people were calling my name and I was like, Megan, it's just a word in Japanese. It's, they don't know you. <laughs> Besides, they would be yelling feathers. Right. Yeah, right. for sure. We right. established that. Yeah. We established that. Okay. So if you were going to give someone running Tokyo like three tips or however many tips, like the most important mm-hmm. things to know going into this, what would they be? Yeah. I think I can't stress enough if there's something that you eat regularly, take it. Like my example would be graham crackers, right? Like that's what I eat. Like clearly they don't make those in other countries. So if there's something that like is a staple to you pre-race or even during a carb load, take it with you. You know, it's easy to take those kinds of things. And then two is I really would check out where you're staying. Like if you're somebody who's a little bit anxious on race morning, like really try to find a hotel that has that breakfast that we talked about and that's close to the start line. I think it's staying close to the start line would help you with all that anxiety of the porta potty situation and not being able to go in a bush like Thomas did. Um, you know, things like that. No, so, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> this brand I was like, yeah. you could not go I'm like not, in Berlin. I'm we were all just like my Japanese friends. I was so respectful. <laughs> it was not him. Yeah. In Berlin, we were all just peeing in the park, you know, like yeah. that was just yeah, what Germans. everybody did. I was like, we can't do that here. Um, so those are two. 
And then three is think through the whole um, race nutrition piece. If you're used to carrying your own fluids, you can't. So think what you're going to do. Either plan on the Bakari sweat, plan out what else you're going to do. So I think, you know, that could really impact. Like in retrospect, I wish I would have switched to Never Second gels instead of sticking with Morton so that I would have just gotten my sodium from my gels and then used some of those salt sticks, but not as many. And then the water, like I think that would have been a better plan for me. But, you know, that's retrospect. Can can I add a fourth tip from you? Yeah. Okay, get sponsored by Abbott and have them <laughs> send you over there and give you the entry. And, and get a bed plane get, yeah, ticket. Get, again, get again, again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, but I mean, in all seriousness, like this experience with Abbott has been unreal. Like I never thought I'd run a marathon overseas. Like that feels like very hard to meet a goal when you're traveling in a way and not in control of so many things. And I don't think I ever would have done it, you know, without their offer to – you know, get me there and make it easy for me to do it. So you're like, I'm yeah. super, super appreciative of the whole yeah. experience. One other tip in all seriousness, yeah. though, if you love running and you love the marathon distance, get into the lottery for J- yeah. for Tokyo I every agree. year. Try to get in there. I and agree. if you do get in, I know it's going to, it's a, it's a big yeah. lift financially and everything like that. It is worth yeah. it. It is a yeah. different world. It's a whole different. Their re, their love for the sport is, it's it's phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. I, I just I fell in love with that country. I think Japan is, like if I am reincarnated, let's I'll show up there. Yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> that's it. It was, and like if somebody is like being a little bit apprehensive to travel alone. Um, people were so kind and it was such a safe environment. I think I took 20 Ubers to go try to explore stuff by myself. And I was always felt safe. I'm walking down alleys to find Pokemon stuffies for my son that like, I am the only American around there or even anyone that doesn't live, you know, in Tokyo. And I was fine. Like everyone was so kind. Like they knew I didn't speak their language. They're pointing at stuff for me. Like it was so comfortable to be there, you know, alone. It was very, very helpful. Did you get strawberries on a stick? That was I did not like craze over there. Oh, I did man. not. There was a line for it. Um, really? All right. I think we chatted enough Tokyo for one day. Megan, congrats again on Thank your you. 253. Did you know what we should tell people? What should we tell people? If they have more questions for Megan, I think she'll be in Boston during the Boston Marathon weekend. Oh, yeah. We'll see y'all and there. We'll be there. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have an opportunity, probably a few opportunities to see us and Megan. Megan, I did a little teaser for a piece of embroidery that was in our story on Believe in the Run. Uh, I'll tell you what it actually is okay. when we get off the air. But people are going to lose their mind for this one. It's a very limited thing that we are going to be giving out at the ASIC shakeout on Sunday. Yeah, so we don't have, we haven't published any details yet. Maybe we will have, no, we will not have by the time this podcast is coming out (laughs) on Tuesday. Uh, But we will have details for you very soon on where to find us and see us in Boston. And so we hope to see you all there. Yes. We do hope to see all of you. All right. um, If you have a question that we haven't answered, you can email us at fuelforthesoulpodcast at gmail.com. And um, we will see you all in two weeks. All right, hold on for one sec. Endo mame to ninjin. Endo manana ninjin. Nope. Okay. That was close. All right. <laughs> the middle. Amazing carrots. The middle. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Welcome home. I was just going to say it's cool. (laughs) There's thumbs up just popped up in the thing. I don't know what happened. I don't know what that was. That was good. Oh, jeez. What's he going to (laughs) do? He's going to play a song. If you're going to play a song. No, I'm not going to play a song. Okay. (laughs) You just chill. Taking a little time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Gotta have a snack. Endo mame to ninjin. Endo manana na jing jing. Nope, that was, <laughs> yeah. that was like Joey doing French. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Endo mame to ninjin. Yeah, I'm going to try that one in a little bit. I'm going to need a little practice first. Keep practicing. <laughs>